question is from Bear Bowen. What are some causes of the obesity epidemic? Oh, man. Did you see my post that I, I, I like to, to pull and trigger people? No, wait. Which one was it? It was on that the study that you you shared in the intro today. The the, the obesity. The, I, actually, I don't think I shared it. No, you talked about it on the intro to did the I show. Did I talk about Yeah, yeah. We okay. talk, didn't we talk about the show? I don't think so. I don't know. No, I don't think we did. Oh, we didn't? No, 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 no. Oh, we talked I, about it before. I was going to bring it up. Yeah, oh, we oh, talked about it before. Oh, so there's, I mean, we should talk about it right now then. There's a, you know, somebody shared in our forum a really a great article. I shared it in my stories uh, earlier the last week. And it's showing that by 2030, that more than 50% of our country will be considered obese. But if we just keep on- It stays on, on the trend. Which, I mean, it's we're, it, we're not slowing down. Yeah, we're it only, doesn't look like any of the it's trends slowing down. The trend's technically speeding up. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it looks like that that's the direction that we're going. Um, and so uh, I on my poll, I did a poll saying that, do you think that the uh, healthy at every size oh, is, yeah, yeah, is yeah, yeah. positively affecting this or negatively mm-hmm. affecting Everybody it? Everybody said negative. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that there's 4% of my following that disagreed. Well, and, uh, so I, when I, you know what's happening. We offended somebody on that last topic, by the way. I'm sure we did. Yeah, I pissed somebody off when I went on, when I went on my rant about how terrible I think it is. It's not the cause of the obesity epidemic, by the way. I don't think that's the case. Oh, no, 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 no. I think what ends up happening is when you get enough people um, that, that are or in a category, then they start to it, it's they start to demand being treated a particular way or whatever, you know, uh, you know like when airlines get sued and uh, you know they're changing the size of chairs now. They're saying changing this like extra larges aren't the same size as they used to be. Extra larges now are far yeah. They start than they to normalize be. it on all, because, all levels. Well, and it, because it comes because it's normal when yeah. half of everybody is obese. Right, it is a normal thing. Right, true. Um, well, okay. So I have, uh, there's been a lot of theories as to what is caused. Now, of course, if we boil it down, we really break it down. We're not burning as many calories and we're eating more calories. And that's a duh, right? But why? What is ex- exa- What exactly has happened to cause that? So there's there's two things. The, the, the lack of burning calories, well, that's an easy one. Life has gotten much easier. Things have gotten automated. Um, you don't, you know, washing clothes now, we're not done by hand. We don't have to carry jugs of water everywhere. Uh, jobs are typically behind a desk now where they used to be very, very physical. So we're just, daily life is just far more sedentary. But I don't think that's the main cause of obesity. In fact, when they do studies on that, they find that the lack of calorie burn has a small, uh, maybe a small part to blame of the obesity epidemic. Really, the big chunk is how much more we eat. Yeah. I think it's it's really the combination of the two of them, right, though? Because you're right. Like, when, when you look at... It's far easier to sit down and overconsume 700 calories than it is to take a daily habit that's changed now by 700 sure. calories, right? Like even somebody who, let's say, like a, a, a carpenter versus a engineer at work all day long, you know, the the carpenter doing a physical activity, and by the way, his body starts to adapt to that after he's been in carpentry for after six. They're months. not burning as many calories as you think. They're not. They're not yeah. burning that many more calories uh, more than the engineer who's they're sitting. healthier. Right, exactly. Yeah. But they're not burning that many calories. So that's the reason why that study is true. When you read mm-hmm. that, that you're right. But I think the combination of a sedentary lifestyle with the overconsumption and how easy it is to consume calories is just well, the fucking recipe for disaster. What you end up, what you have is, you know, and we'll start with America because we started the trend, right? When we talk about, um, you know, you know, Western dietary practices that are contributing yeah, to obesity, one. America started it. Now, how did America start it? Why is it that way? Okay, so America uh, became one of the wealthiest countries, the fastest, and we have we had some of the best markets in the world. And what do markets do better than anything? Give people what they want. They yeah. give people what they want. So if if people really value, uh, you know, shoes, then the market's going to produce a shit ton of awesome shoes. If people really value the way food tastes, if that's what we value the most, more than anything, is I want food that tastes really good. The market is going to create as, that as much as possible. The second thing that Americans or that people in general really value is convenience. We want tasty food that doesn't take a long time to make. In fact, I don't want to make it. I want to buy it and I want to be able to eat it. And so we have this this huge flood of hyper palatable processed foods that started to come into the market. And so that's the main cause of obesity because that's what causes people to eat more uh, food. Now we used to think it was sugar, carbs, 
fat. Oh, you know, people are eating too much fat. We got to make everything low fat. And then what do food manufacturers do? They find a way to make food tasty without fat yeah. by adding more sugar. Oh, no, it's too much carbs. Cut the carbs out. So then food manufacturers figure that out. And they're, oh, fat's okay now. Well, let's make food with, with fat or whatever. The bottom line is super hyper palatable foods encourage you to eat more. That's what they do. They're designed to do that. And they do it in such a way that it's almost, I hate to use the word unfair, but your body's natural ability to tell you to, okay, it's, you've had enough food, it gets a little hijacked. And studies now show that people will eat about five to 600 more calories a day when given access to hyper palatable processed food versus whole natural food. Even when people aren't, they're not counting macros or anything, they're just going about their day, you'll eat five or 600 more calories of processed food than you will other foods. So when you look at the, the rise of obesity in America and you slap on top of that a chart of, hyper palatable processed food penetration in the market, they match. Uh, Americans used to eat homemade dinners and those started to kind of fall out of favor. More and more processed food. Homemade breakfast, homemade lunch, homemade dinners, those started to fall out of favor. More and more processed food as that started happening, more and more obesity. And it's just, and every time another country adopts our, uh, you know, these types of foods, you look at Mexico, for example, their obesity exploded over two decades. They went from having no obesity to becoming one of the fattest countries uh, I in the world. Also, I also think that have, us having obese kids now is greatly contributing to that. Oh. I mean, just a couple decades ago, that was rare. It, it was, spreads everywhere. It was rare to see a child uh, under the age of 10 or 12 that would be literally like obese, mm -hmm. where it's extremely common now. And I think a lot of that has to do, and you know, to, again, kind of debate the, the movement point, because... You know, I, I was a kid who could get, I ate a lot of, I ate shitty food and candy as a kid growing up and I got away with it as a kid because I was extremely active. Yeah. I was playing all the time. Like now they, like they all day, all day, yeah. all day I was playing. Yeah. Like I, you, my parents would have to settle me down, like sit me down or bring mm. me in the house. Like I was not sitting on a phone or on a computer or an iPad all day long and then also mm -hmm. shuttling all that crap. Yeah, I was eating Slurpees and having candy and and, eat, and eating desserts and I was doing a lot of that stuff as a kid, but I was also digging holes and building forts and well, fucking playing tag and playing flag yeah. football. Like, I mean, all it, day long. Yeah, to me, it seems like we started out like we, we've solved all these problems for adults in, in their jobs, like less, you know, laborious jobs that we had to do. And like now we can now we can kind of sit in the con, you know, in the comfort of our own chairs and on, on screens. And, you know, now it's trickled into to play. And, and you see this a lot with kids now where it's like, you know, lots of the entertainment and the excitement is revolves around video games. It revolves around, you know, whatever the latest social media thing is that they can interact with, you know, and they're just not outside being interactive like and, and, and using their body to do things as much. It, it, and, but there's another part to that. Yes, you burn more calories because you're playing all day, but you're also too busy to eat. So at, when, right, when, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. For, because yeah. when I was a kid, if we were out all and day that's long, why the, that's I wasn't why, snacking. That's all day why long. the study of of showing that, like, oh, when you look at it, just like how many calories more they're burning, it doesn't really affect. It's also affecting that you don't have time to sit in front and eat yeah. and sitting in front of a fucking uh, a screen being sucked into a video game. And the pantry's from, right there. Right. The I, I mean, what, Much easier to sit well, there and suck on sodas. Dude, and even like these, like I, my kids are in sports and like half the kids will come in, their parents will give them all this junk food and shit to fuel, quote unquote, their activity, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like they're getting activity, but now they're, they're pumping them full of like cookies and all this bullshit before they even get started. Dude, my mom used to have to chase my siblings around to make them eat. They yeah. just have to chase them to eat because they didn't want to stop playing. Yeah, that's how we were. So like, like we, you'd eat breakfast and then you'd be playing right. and then lunch, you'd come in and eat whatever your mom made you'd real quick. You'd come in just starving like, ah. And you'd eat it real fast and get the fuck out. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're on your computer or on an iPad all, or watching TV all day long. Yeah, you're the, shoveling food while the you're- The food's right there. Yeah. The food, and you're mindlessly eating. And then of course, the, the again, it's it, and 100%. I, I place most of the blame on the hyper palatable food. Now this- now, this makes the argument for why people need to be healthy. Because remember, markets reflect what people want. And when anytime we look at markets and we think, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Why are we making these things? Why are we feeding ours? Because we're paying for it. If, we, if, if humans were truly healthy in the, in, the, in the fullest sense, the decisions that we would make and the, value that we would, the values we would have would push the market to make things that were better for us. So if everybody valued real whole foods and if everybody really understood the true value of food and, and, and wanted to be healthy and enjoyed eating certain healthy things because they love themselves, the market would go in that direction. But the problem is 
people have a bad relationship with food. Food is a way to make yourself feel better about your emotions or anxieties. You only value food for its taste. Ask somebody, you know, next time you go out with your friends and you say, hey, what do you guys want to eat for lunch? 100% of the decision is based off of what they is going to taste the best. N none of it's going to be like, oh, you know what? I, th I think I really need to eat some, you know, vegetables for my digestion or yeah, I'm feeling kind of low energy. It's always like, oh, I don't feel like Mexican. I feel like, oh, you know, it's really good. Let's try eating. It's all based off of the taste. So when you go to the grocery store, all of the foods that were made and manufactured are all, I mean, all the money goes into making them as tasty and enjoyable to eat as possible. Not inherently a bad thing, but if that's all you eat, you're going to eat more. Yeah. And that's 100% what caused. And again, when you look at countries that adopt this, the more processed foods they start to eat, the fatter, the fatter society gets. And sicker yeah. they get. Um, and again, Mexico is a phenomenal example. It was like 20, 30 years ago, obesity was rare in Mexico. Yeah. Today, I believe Mexico is uh, either mirroring America's obesity rate or might even have surpassed us because they started to eat adopted. I've heard this from a lot of immigrants coming in and, and culturally, like getting into like the way Americans are eating with the pro and it, it just like it like totally affects them. Like all of them get obese. And I don't want I don't want to demonize processed food because by by no means does a day go by that I don't have something that's processed. Sure. So yeah. I want to I want to make that clear. But you're aware. Yeah. So I, I think it's just that, but a bulk of my food still comes from Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. What happened was we went and we, we came up in a time where we're at one point we were mostly eating Whole Foods, then processed foods came in and then it, it went from being Whole Foods, a little bit of processed foods, Whole Foods, then half processed foods, whole little bit of Whole Foods, mostly processed foods to now all processed foods for a majority of people. Right. And that's where we went really wrong. It's not that you can't have something because so much is processed. Our protein powder is processed yeah. that we talked about today. That's processed, right? Yeah. So there's so many things that are processed. And, and, and processed foods allow food to be transferred and moved and right. it allows them. And it, it's fed a lot of people. There's a lot of value to it. Uh, but I think you have to be aware. You know, yeah, you just gotta. You just have to be aware of how much of it and if it's making up a bulk of your day and a bulk of your you're eating it. It should be you mostly have to be conscious of it now, right? It needs to be mostly whole foods, and then you and then you use those processed foods. I think in the uh, occasion when it makes the most sense. It's one of the main reasons why I fear the demonization of meat that we're starting to see in a lot of these documentaries and stuff is because a lot of people aren't aren't going to go vegan for the right reasons. They're going to just avoid meat. And if you look at the typical person's diet, the typical American's diet. It's mostly processed food, but the very few things that are unprocessed tend to be what? Chicken, meat, eggs, milk. So right. then they're going to be afraid of those things, and now you've eliminated all their yeah, whole natural all food. All processed options. Now it's 100% yeah. uh, processed food. If you look at Europe, for example, Europe's obesity rates are climbing, right? Starting to match ours. But one country in Western Europe kind of fell behind with the obesity, and that was Italy. For a long time, Italians had one of some of the lowest. Now it's not like that anymore. Their obesity has climbed quite quite high, or starting to climb pretty high, but they had low obesity rates compared to other countries. Part of the reason for that is because Italians are they have a pride in homemade foods. They have a culture around it, and so they resisted for a long time the processed food culture. Now they didn't win. Uh, processed food has won, and obesity among Italians now is is going through the roof, including Shift children. Shift order made its way. But I, I remember <laughs> this is it's. I remember there was a, a story I read a lot. This was maybe 15 years ago, where a McDonald's opened in a town in Italy, and the Italians protested it and made it shut down because <laughs> they because wow. they're so like, no, we love our homemade you know food or whatever. Right. But it actually protected them from obesity for for a little while now. Now they're now they're they're climbing. It's a little terrible.